so let's we talked about the the iPhone and the iPad real quick, but like yeah. what's why is why do they have lidar in in there? What is it doing for for the phones? I think some of the reasons that they put it in is that um, first of all, gaming. So the, the really near term applications, there's because Apple's already uh, kind of alluded to three or four of them, or those who follow this closely. One is like games. So there's like a lava game that people play on their phones, uh, augmented reality stuff where you hold the phone oh. or the iPad up, point it in your room, and there's a gremlin in the middle of the room that's not actually... It's basically Pokemon Go type, type right. thing. Well, you need 3D photo... Re- if you put your hand between... Without LiDAR, if you put your hand between you and where that kind of gremlin-looking thing allegedly is that your augmented reality system is putting there, your hand will not occlude the gremlin right now because the camera doesn't know where your hand is, mm-hmm. Right. The gremlin is going to be in that space with the lidar, for example, um, on the Apple uh, iPhone. Say the iPhone 12. So I mean, they do it. You put your hand up, and you would occlude part of the gremlin because the app, the, the lidar, knows your hands between you and where it is putting that fake gremlin in the room because it knows how far away your couch is because it's using lasers to do that. Now, you can do right. it with the two cameras, but it's really immediate. And and uh, so that's sort of gaming. There's a bunch of applications like that. IKEA is interested in this and others because you could scan your room and then put a couch here or there or whatever, because it knows exactly the dimensions. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and then the third one that I saw was quite interesting. It was a health related application. They had a guy, this, this is, I think the stuff's on YouTube. Um, if you, you know, look at Apple, you know, iPhone or I, I, iPad pro LIDAR, and there's a bunch of videos out there that kind of show how this works, but, he's against a, a, a wall and he lifts his arm up. Like let's say you had shoulder surgery and they're looking at range of motion. Mm-hmm. And as he lifts his arm up, you see um, a calibration showing you exactly how many degrees that arm is moving. Right. Um, and another application that is uh, really easy to imagine is like Zappos or stitch fix guys that are doing um, custom clothing or, or in Zappos oh. case, you need to know your size. Right. If you scan your foot. Your foot is, they're going to know your foot. I mean, you can scan the body, whatever. They'll figure out how they want you to scan it. They will know precisely how big your foot is. Yeah. If you have a bump on your foot, whatever. And if you were to drop to your skivvies and, and get laser and have someone laser, so you set your phone up, turn in a 360 and hit save, then they'll know precisely your measurements for a custom suit or a custom anything you're going to wear. Right. So those are... I think those applications, if you come back in 10 years and listen to this thing, which everybody should definitely do. Um, mm-hmm. But if you were to come back and listen to this, it'd be like, that is so uncreative. That is so lame that you yeah. can come up with these ideas. Because, <laughs> because the truth is, this is a tool that people who are doing things that you and I have really not thought much about are like, oh, that's a big deal. What you're doing is democratizing LiDAR. You're democratizing the, the laser tape measure. and who the hell knows where this is going to go? I mean, the people that at Hughes, the guy that invented the laser could not have imagined that you can put, you know, a, a, a liar on a phone or that you can, you can map Mars with it or whatever they're doing with this technology now. And it's going to be exactly the same deal. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. It totally makes sense to use it for, for AR related stuff, but then yeah, in the, the availability to scan things around you and everything. So that, that makes sense. That's going to be yeah. so fun to see what, you know, these third-party app developers come up with if they have access to that kind of, you know, equipment in there. Absolutely. It's a new tool. It's a new, it's a fundamentally interesting tool that creative mm-hmm. people will take in directions that we can't predict very yeah. simply. So, and it's exciting. I mean, I think it's cool. You could look at it like, oh, another thing on the, I know, bell whistle on the iPhone. But I really think this bell or whistle is going to be much more meaningful mm-hmm. and um, useful than people can imagine at the moment. Right. Yeah. Man. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy. And these are dog treats. Now, I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats. And all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video. And this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay. I believe you. You said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats. And all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there. 
pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button, subscribe to Curiosityness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. Bro, not very good.